This is only a selection of some of the stuff I've done. Mm, let's see now. This was actually created when I worked at a game studio. They were doing a um, a, a pitch for a science fiction game that they wanted to create. And this was just a, a model I created for them for that. That's a gothic folly. This is all of this um, Ivy work here. That's what I was talking about. This is all created in 3D Studio Max and then imported into the into Eon View. Oh, cool. Thank you. Glad you like the work. Again, this is some sort of the architectural stuff that I've done. Uh, that's what you see at the top of my page here, that uh, castle. This was um, some concept artwork I did for a level I created using the Unreal Engine. Again, just a uh, temple ruin. And some more in architectural stuff that I've done for some Archbiz companies. Uh, this, this is some of the um, the heritage building work that I've, I've done in the past. That's just a bridge. So yeah, and this again, this is concept artwork I did for um, Mad Max actually. When they remade the Mad Max game, they wanted some concept art done, so I created that for them. This is not the Mad Max game that um, has just been released. This was prior to that, so this was about three years ago maybe, maybe four. So yeah, check out some of my work here or you can check out my um, my pages on the creative market. But I tend to gravitate to doing a lot of this sort of detailed work. Old, I don't know if you call it old fashioned, but um, yeah. So let's see, we're going to take these um, banister, small banister columns into Mari. So we will create a new project. We'll call it small banister columns. I'm going to load up that OBJ we just exported from Max. It's in our rework folder. Uh, it's that one there. Yeah, I did do the robot character actually. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I created that um, for my logo. I've used it on all of my websites and I thought it would be a good um, logo to use on Twitch as well. It's a little egg bot there, a little robot that pops out from the egg. I'm just going to change my um, temp directory. I'm going to create a 2K texture. So we have uh, our model. Okay. That little animation of the robot, if you check out my uh, Flash portfolio, so if you go to my phildust3d.com and then the very first uh, link in that bar is uh, my Flash portfolio. You see I use him there as well. He catches little balls as you click between the different sections of my Flash portfolio. Yeah, I like sci-fi stuff as well. I mean, I, 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 as far as rendering and modeling goes, I really like working with stone, doing stone work and, and detailed stone modeling. Like, and when I say stone, I mean um, like you saw on the columns here and or the angel, that sort of that sort of detailing. I really like doing that. Um, but sci-fi is very cool too. I, I enjoyed it when when I made that sci-fi um complex that you saw in my gallery. That was fun to work on. It's not true sci-fi though because it's a mixture of, I don't know what you'd call it, it's a mixture of arch work. So gothic sci-fi, I guess you'd call that. The theme for their game, they wanted a game that was um, steampunk. So that's the sort of, they were trending towards that sort of thing. And Zoo, thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. E N Z U H, I think it is. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate the follow. Very good of you. Let's turn on flat shading here, and um, let's turn off 
edge masking. And just pull in our base texture here. So I'm going to import into the layer stack that render to texture that we made in um, 3D Studio Max. Again, Mari defaults to TIFF, so just pop a star in there and it'll show everything in your directory. Small banister columns, that's the one that we rendered out. So I'm going to import that. <laughs> oh, cool. In, in view, uh, yeah. Uh, now, this has happened because we forgot one step in 3D Studio Max. So let's jump back into Max and fix that right now. When we um, render to texture our columns here, we forgot to create our shader. So let's pop back down to the end of the stack. So I always work my way down. That way I know the last thing I worked on. We're going to throw down standard shader, pop in a bitmap. Steampunk, yeah, just throw a lot of dial, dials and gauges and copper at it <laughs> and you're good to go. Very true. Steampunk can look really cool. I mean, I like, I like the look of steampunk. Uh, they were very big on it for this game that they wanted that they were pitching. So the the, the lead um, what would you call him producer, I guess, on the game was really fond of um, steampunk. Cool. Welcome back. Heck and trolls. Uh, let's see, small banister columns, that's the one we want. Let's pipe that into the diffuse channel. And we always turn on shaded material and realistic material so that we can see it in our viewport, otherwise you won't see the texture. We have our object selected, so I'm going to assign the material to the selection. It's going to go funky, so let's um, fix that by going to the utilities tab. Channel info, open channel info. Uh, we're going to copy the channel UV channel 2 into UV channel 1. That'll fix that up again. We're going to clear out channel 2. You can um, leave it in there, but as I've been saying, it just increases the file size for no benefit, so you might as well clear it out. Heck, okay. Heck it is. Thanks for popping into chat. And thanks for watching the stream. All of you guys, I really appreciate you watching the stream. So now that we've assigned the right UV channel to this part of the model, let's um, export it again. Uh, I have used Maya. Um, as I was talking, as I was telling Galen, I don't, I find Max is easier for me to use. I've been using Max for more than 10 years now, so, and it's very good in architectural visualization. Uh, I use, Maya is used a lot in character work, and I don't tend to do a lot of character work. I like the interface of 3D Studio Max. Okay, so we are exporting this as an OBJ, and we're going to call it Small Bannister Columns. Yes, we want to override it. Okay. Let's just pull out on that model a bit and jump back into Mari. I'm just going to close that project down. We'll save the changes. Yeah, I, I, I find working with Max than their GUI, I don't know, it's just easier for me to find what I need, whereas with uh, Maya, things tend to be nested within menus, and I find that a bit confusing. Blender's also really good 3D software, very good free 3D software. I've also used um, Cinema 4D. That's another underrated and really great piece of 3D software to use. If you ever get a chance to use it, I can recommend it. It's, it's very good. Uh, yeah, Blender, as I said, is great. So let's see. Let's... Um, Let's redo this. We'll create a new project again. We're going to call it small columns two, so I know what I'm doing. Uh, that one there. 
Yeah, I've noticed that Cinema 4D was used quite a bit for um, for doing titles and videos and that sort of thing. Uh, that's what we used to use it for at the studio that I worked in at the time. That was a while ago, though. I haven't done um, video work for a while. I mean, I do a lot of video work now with Twitch with my um, streams, but uh, I, professionally for uh, work, I tend to do more 3D work than video work now. So we're doing a 2K texture. We've changed my temp directory. We've got our OBJ in our name. Let's go OK. And like I said, Cinema 4D is it's a great piece of software. People tend to concentrate on the on the bigger ones like Max and Maya and that type of thing. But um, Cinema 4D is, is great. I enjoyed using it. I haven't used it for a while, but I enjoyed it. I love Max. I love using 3D Studio Max. Let's import our texture. So we'll try this again. Import into Layer Stack. That import into new channel, that's just if you want your texture on a separate channel here, which I don't, so because we're painting over our texture anyway. Coral Draw. Oh, man. I haven't um, used Coral Draw for so long. When I was doing, when I was at uni, um, one of the guys that I was, I used to do a lot of projects with at uni. He was, he loved Coral Draw. Coral, yeah, and it's, it's a good piece of software as well. You just don't hear about it much anymore. I think they still update it though. Yeah, it'll be about, it'll be, yeah, since about, I haven't used Coral Draw since about 2016, so not for the last 10 years. But it's, it's good software and he loved it. This guy I used to, I did uni with him. Absolutely loved Coral Draw. <laughs> It'd take me back to the 90s, heck. Where are we? That's the one we want there. Jeez, Coral Draw, man. <laughs> Inkscape, I don't know that one. Um, when I used to do a lot of vector work, I used to use Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator. But again, I haven't used Illustrator for a few years now. I don't tend to do a lot of vector work anymore. Well, you both know about Inkscape, do you? I don't know Inkscape at all. I have to check it out. Like I said, though, I don't do a, um, a lot of uh, vector work. Thank you for the follow, Heck. I appreciate that. I, I lo always uh, appreciate it when you guys follow my Twitch channel. It's really good of you. Yeah, I don't tend to do a lot of uh, vector work anymore. It's all 3D stuff now for me. Or, or occasionally I'll do web stuff, like because uh, I do programming as well. So I'll do um, programming in PHP or uh, what else have I done? CSS. Yeah, thanks, Eck. Yeah, so if I do programming, it's either PHP or CSS or, um, oh, I don't know, Flash script but I don't gen generally use Adobe Flash much anymore either. It used to be very big. I can do web work too, cool. Uh, or I do Mac script as well. So I, I cr actually created a plugin for 3D Studio Max if you guys work with um, Speed Tree and you want to take your Speed Tree animated plants into Eon View. Uh, I created a plugin in 3D Studio Max so that you could uh, Import your speed tree trees into Max, animate them, animate them in speed tree, import them into Max, then export them using this plugin for Eon View. Not, not so much of a problem now with View because they've uh, added the ability to import Alembic files, which is what a lot of places are using for animated uh, models now. Yeah. Flash isn't, they're trying to phase Flash out now. Even Adobe are trying to, I think they're, they're not even calling it Flash anymore. I think they're calling it Animate now. But HTML5 is, seems to be taking over the web, so Flash is on its way out. I still keep it for my portfolio because, you know, I, create, I put a lot of work into creating the portfolio, my Flash portfolio, and I haven't got around to um, updating it for HTML5 yet. But my main website is in HTML5, that Phil does 3 d com. You used uh, Inkscape for background reference images, Galen. Ah, for modeling vector scales. Yeah, that's a, 
That's cool. Because yeah, vectors will give you a really clean edge regardless of how close you zoom in on them. That's what um, they're great for. Unlike a bitmap where, the, you know, the closer you zoom in, the more pixelated it becomes. With a vector, it stays crisp. And then Flash, of course, was very big on vectors too. In the early days when you were using it, um, a lot of people would, would use it, would create vectors in Adobe Illustrator and then bring them into Adobe Flash. To animate them. Three fire trucks to make them have a cartoon effect. Oh, okay. Yeah, the marquee tool in Photoshop. Cool. Cool. Right, where are we here? Let's uh, save our file. And let's stir on a new layer. And let's go into our image manager and pull in some textures to use. And again, as I was saying, because um, I've been using these same textures for the entire model, I always suggest you stick to, you can pull in as many textures as you want and use as many textures as you want on, on your model, but when you're creating an object like that, a garden terrace, you're better off not mixing up too many textures. You want to look, you, you want the model to look consistent. So that means using the same textures on different sections of the model. If you start mixing and matching too much, you're going to start, it, it's better to keep the model consistent. So stick to or try to stick to the same sort of textures throughout the model. Again, as I said uh, yesterday, that's not always the case. Sometimes you'll want completely different textures, depending on the model. But for this garden terrace, to keep everything consistent, and what I mean by consistent is these dirt marks, water damage marks that we've used everywhere. I've, I've stuck to the same texture maps to create them, and that's just so that the overall model looks like it fits together. It doesn't look like you've used different objects from different things. So just something to keep in mind when you're doing texturing to try and keep the uh, texture textures that you use consistent. Okay, let's pull in a couple more. So we always use our dirt and graffiti maps. That's what we that's what we've been using for um the terrace so far. And I always grab the high resolution versions of these maps. Okay, we'll open them up. Now we have to decide on what color we want to make these columns. So once it's finished pulling them in, I'm going to jump back into Max very quickly and just check it, have a look at the overall model and see what color scheme I want. Yes, we're still streaming, good. <laughs> okay, let's just quickly jump back into Max so I can uh, have a look at this model and we can get a better idea of the color. All right, now we're going dark here on these banisters and we're going to probably go quite dark here on the railings surrounding these small columns. So I may go white with a whiter color or lighter color for the columns themselves. That'll help them really pop once we texture up these uh, pink parts into a darker texture. And as I was explaining, I, I, anything that I haven't textured up yet, I use... A, a, I could just use as a base color like the pink and the green and the gray. That just shows me all the white here. The bits of the model that I haven't textured yet. Just a good visual cue to me that um, I still need to texture up these bits. So I think if we go to a lighter color here and then a darker color on the surrounding borders, it'll help to make these pop in the overall model. 
Let's jump back into Mari. We're working on a new layer. Let's find an interesting texture. And again, I use Mari, but um, a lot of people like to work in Photoshop, and I'll work in Photoshop as well. Uh, an algorithmic make a great 3D painting program called uh, Substance Painter. So uh, I just uh, I'm used to Mari. I like Mari's interface, so that's why I'm using it. But I'll use Photoshop as well. I like Mari too because you can paint directly in the UVs like you can in Photoshop if you like to work that way. I like to work in 3D though. I like to paint the model up in 3D. Uh, no, I don't like that texture, so let's find something else. Mm, no, I'm not really thrilled about that. Uh, maybe, but it's, it's a bit too... I want something more white than yellow and brown. So, like I said, I want it to pop in the... Um, in, in those banisters, so when you're looking at the model... That's very true too, yeah. They are somewhat protected. We are going to dirty them up a bit. And that's how we're going to do our variation, the three three or four texture variations. We're going to do that through the dirt maps. But you're right. They are somewhat protected and they're quite small. So they're not going to... Uh, they're not going to grab as much dirt, say, as these large wall sections did where you have the water damage running down because they are quite small and, and they are protected within the um, within the railings here. But they won't have dirtied up quite so much. So, But again, I want to use a whiter texture, a lighter texture, so that they pop when we darken up these um, outside banisters. So let's jump back into Mari. And I think maybe we'll use this texture here. This looks like it's... I'm just going to angle my model up here. Um, I might work on an angle slightly like that. I've got um, masking turned all. Um, I'm going to scale my texture up till it just covers the model itself. Again, I scale just by hitting the um, Control and Shift key and then the left mouse button. We'll paint this in, we'll check it out, and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, because we're on a new layer, if we don't like it, it's easy for us to remove it. And this just has that lichen growing on it, which... Um, There's always a nice touch. Let me just move this one to around about here. And just by moving the texture as we're painting along, you can avoid any repetition from happening. I'm just going to bake that down by hitting the Alt key. We'll move down to these three here. Paint this one in. I'll move the texture over a little bit. Paint this one in. No, a bit more, I think. I'm just moving the texture as I'm painting so I don't get too much repetition happening because the texture is um, quite busy. And this darker one, I think we'll move back down to this end here. I'm just going to bake that down. Let's rotate the model around. Work from this angle here. Again, I'm angling it slightly. I'm not working flat onto the model because we'll get stretching happening along the sides. I'm angling it slightly back and slightly up. Not quite that much. 
um, and again I, I want to get my model as straight as I possibly can. I can rotate the texture to match the model but um, I prefer to keep it as straight as I can and again you'll notice I'm not scaling the texture and I'm not scaling the model. That's to keep it the texture consistent for, across the front and the back. If you scale the texture or you scale the model you're going to have a different um, scaling from one side to the other and that won't look right. And again because we, we're using the same texture but they're on opposite sides of the model you're never going to see them both at the same time. So. So we can cheat. Just to speed it up a bit, speed our time up a bit. I'll we'll bake that down. You know, it's funny, when I first started working um, in studios, I was paranoid because I'd come out of um, university. And I thought to my, and I looked at all the work that people had done over the years. Like, I, I always like looking at other 3D artists' work and how good they are. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to have to spend hours and hours to get um, to be able to compete with these people, you know, to get the model to look the way I want it, to, to get it to look half as good as what these guys were doing. And uh, working for a studio, you're um, pressed for time. They always want their, the project immediately. Like they don't appreciate how long it can take to create a 3D model. So I was always um, wanting to do the best work I could having managers saying to me, we want it now, we want it now, we want it now. So having to get to do it very quickly. And I was always worried that by taking these shortcuts that it was somehow wrong, I shouldn't be doing it, that, 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 that these guys weren't doing it and I shouldn't do it. But what I found by working through for the studios is these guys do it all the time. You know, you these little tricks where you repeat a texture, you um, copy it, rotate it, that's the sort of trick that they do all the time and they do, they have to do that to get the uh, model out in time for the, for the deadline. But it's just something that I didn't appreciate or understand when I was at uni because I thought to myself, oh, everything must be unique, everything must, you must do everything individually and uniquely, but that's not the case at all. The, the, these shortcuts that they use, they use all the time. It was just me being naive as a uni student, not realising. So yeah, never be ashamed or afraid to um, copy your texture or not do everything uniquely because most of the guys in studios don't either. Layers on layers, that's exactly right. And if you create three or four variations of a texture, then you can repeat that and Provided you don't put two repeating textures right next to each other, people are not going to notice. They don't notice. It's not something that um, that you pick up on. You, you'd think you would notice, but you don't. I mean, of course, you, do, you try not to be too obvious. Like here, for instance, I've noticed there's that texture is here. So I'm going to move it over a bit like that. Um, you can, let me, I've just got to try and remember the command to allow Nightbot for you to post a link. Um, do any of you guys remember what the command is for, for allowing a link? It's not allow. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I really would like to see it. Um, I'm just got to remember, trying to remember the command for Nightbot to allow me to look, to, to get you to link a, to send or post a link, because Nightbot will uh, time you out if you try and post a link until I um, permit it. Let me just um, jump into Nightbot here quickly. I'm going to try and search for the command. Okay. Uh, 
I think it's permit, so I'll try that. Let me see. Just bear with me guys, I'm um I'm gonna see if I can oh, okay. You can whisper it to me uh heck if you want, but um I'll say, see if I can give you a permission, brief permission to post a link. Okay, you can post a link into chat for the next 60 seconds, dude. So if you want to post a link, uh, do it now. Okay, let me check that out. I'm having a look at it at the moment. Just waiting for it to load up. Walkabout Festival, Friday, August 18, to Sunday, August 20. That's uh, really cool. Did you do this flyer yourself? I really um I like that. That that looks very cool. I like the colours you've used too. You go from the blue through the yellow to the red. Re really nice, nice work. Well done. Yeah, looks looks really good. I like it. Like I said, the colour work is, is great. Text is easy to read, which is important on a flyer. Yeah, nicely done. Really nice. Nice work. Oh, you host a festival, do you? Cool. It has Buddha in it, does it? Yeah, it looks really good. What's the festival for? What exactly is it? Look in the middle behind the text, hey? Oh, yes, yes, I can see right in the very middle itself. Yeah, just the outline I can actually make out. Cool. What's the festival? It is very subtle, Galen, yeah. You can just see the outline of the Buddha in the um, behind the text, as he was saying. Let's work on these sides a bit, I think. 25% opacity. Mm, that sounds cool. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? Once you, once you point something out, once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's like that with uh, dead pixels on a monitor. Once you've um, noticed them, you can't unnotice them again. 50 DJs and 10 bands, that sounds really cool. So it only goes for the two days, the 
Saturday and the Sunday. I haven't been to a live event for quite a while. I used to go to a lot of raves. I haven't done that for a while there. Break that down. Cool. I will uh, check that out soon. I don't actually have my Twitch page up. I uh, monitor my stream on a second machine and uh, I, I don't actually have it logged into that machine. I use a chatty client to actually talk to you guys, so I'm not logged into my main Twitch account. I'll check the whisper out uh, after I finish the stream. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've actually blocked whispers on my account or not. I'll check it. I did. I remember when I first set up my Twitch account, I did block whispers. I think I might have turned them on again couple of months ago. I'll have to check it. Yeah, heck, I, I may have whispers turned off on my account. I'll, I'll check it out after I finish the stream. Like I said, I'm not actually logged into my account at the moment because I don't uh, want to start dropping frames in OBS by having my stream running in the background. So I use a chatty client so I can talk to you guys. I don't actually log into my Twitch stream. But uh, I'll check it. I may have whispers turned off. I know I used to have them turned off. I thought I turned them back on again a couple of months ago, but I'll check that. 